Maple here with another exciting video for you all today. Um, welcome to another episode of Shoujo Stereotypes. For those of you who are just tuning in, this is a wonderful segment that I've started talking a little bit about the genre of manga and anime called Shoujo, which is targeted towards the female demographic. Um, now generally it is also under the genre of romance. There's usually a lot of romantic subplot if that's not the main plot, but that's not the case in every shoujo. So the last two videos I did were talking about two of the types of guys that you often see in shoujo, but I wanted to do something a little bit different so I can go back to the guys later and be a little bit more detailed. And I want to talk a little bit about our main protagonist. Um, the main question that goes through my mind constantly is what is so special about this protagonist? Whatever, whoever this main girl is, every guy wants to date her. Every guy. Even, even the guys that initially hate her, have tried to kill her, have tried to rape her, dark stuff like that, eventually are, come around and are like, oh, I actually generally like this girl for whatever weird reason. So my question is, okay, well, what's so important about this female protagonist? And the answer is, not that much. I mean, she can either, generally she tells the love interest, the guys, bad boy, prince, whatever, she usually tells them no when they hit on her, or she is a very, very kind person. Um, there's a lot of different genres within the main girls, but I just wanted to focus a little bit more on why the guy is interested rather than what the type of girl is. Now you do have girls like Toru Honda, who's incredibly oblivious, but is the most like kind and understanding person in the world um, from Fruits Basket. Or you have characters like uh, Misa from Midsummer, who hate men and generally are can stand up for themselves, they can fight for themselves, uh, don't really care what other people think to an extent, don't care what guys think to an extent, um, and that attracts a bunch of guys to them. So I think to look at this issue, you not only need to look at the main girl, but you need to look a little bit about what the girls around her are doing. In shoujo, there's a bunch of different girls generally. There's the rivals, there's the fan clubs of girls who are obsessed with whoever the male love interest is. Basically, if he's hot, they will literally put their life on the line just for a chance to be with this guy. And honestly, I'm like, is the guy really that good? Generally, they are. I tend to like second leads better than the main guy, but that's just my preference. But yeah, to look at the girls, if you look a little bit more in depth, they're not really that interesting. They blindly follow whatever the guy tells them. They're in love with him simply because he is physically appealing, and I think maybe that's what drives the guys to like our main character. They see beneath his appearance and see the inner person that he is, which is, I think, quite ridiculous, but it's in everything. I mean, it's not just in shoujo. If you look at romance novels, if you look at movies nowadays, stuff like Twilight, stuff like um, Fifty Shades of Grey, um, in cases like these it is. The girl sees more than just an attractive guy and wants to get to know the real him and all this different stuff. Whereas it brings up the question of why has no other girl tried this before? Now a couple shoujo show that a couple maybe sometimes that's not the case and there has been a girl before. Generally she's like a childhood friend or an ex but they always come back as a rival and seem to be more of a negative player rather than a positive. In most cases of the main protagonist, she's pretty easy to manipulate. I love when I read shoujo where that's not the case and she's like, I'm not listening to what you tell me because I do what I want, I'm an independent woman. But in most cases, they listen to what's being told, the curiosity kills the cat, whatever type of thing kicks in, they're blackmailed, they're manipulated ridiculously into either dating the guy or breaking up with the guy, either way. Our main character isn't always the brightest character, but she is leagues beyond whatever one-dimensional characters surround her. Her caring nature and general need to help the guy with whatever personal issue he is, aka mommy and daddy issues generally, um, is what kind of makes us fall in love with her a little bit. In cases like Skip Beat or in um, 
I can't remember the name of the anime for the life of me. I'll flash a picture when I do. Uh, the girl princess with the dragon. It does focus a little bit more on our main character and her adventure and her journey rather than the romantic subplot that takes like 200 plus chapters to get to. Which in those cases I really really enjoy. I feel like those are a little bit more different and more in depth and really show us a main character that we can really fall in love of. But in a lot of stereotypical shoujo high school settings that's not the case. Our main character um her main problems are either deciding between two guys or uh, figuring out how to make herself, uh, or they always have self bad self-esteem, so they're always putting themselves down um, rather than, you know, put, lifting themselves up. And part of this does have to do with the genre in itself. It's meant for girls who are 18 and under. High school is a really, really rough age. You're figuring out who you are, you're figuring out your sexual orientation, who you want to be, all that sort of stuff, and people can generally be mean. So stuff like shoujo, uh, stereotypical high school can be related to because if you read it, you want it to happen to you. You want this gorgeous guy to come up and be interested in you because you're different, even though you're not. Um, I feel like they maybe dull down the main character somewhat in, in her characteristics just because they want uh, the audience to relate more. Either way, this question can't be answered in the span of like eight minutes. It's something you really have to look into and I would love to delve more into it, but I want to ask you all, what do you all think? Uh, what's your favorite kind of protagonist? What's your favorite series? What makes this girl so different? Would you want to read a series where the, all the Carol characters around her are just as interesting? Thank you so much for watching. I was very excited to do another exciting episode of Shoujo Stereotypes. Stay tuned because in the next couple of segments, I will be talking about the crazy scenarios involved in Shoujo series from Kabe Dons to getting locked in freezer closets. So if you like, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day.